is how we ride. This is how we do. Brad, I'm sorry I made all that up. It's all a joke. Nothing is true. It's all a lie. This is a comedy show. This is a comedy show. None of this is serious. Um, we we are we are not um being honest. Everything is a joke. It is labeled as a a comedy, um, in YouTube. So that's the situation. That's what's going on. Uh, as far as what's going on in the world, oh man, we could we could we could. Di- I'm not doing a deep dive into all the stuff that's happening. Oh God, there could be a whole shebanger made up of that one. Yeah, Spike must have passed out. Or Spike may, may be out there just chasing women. You know, women run his life, control his life. Um, I will say that I'm, I'm I, I mean, I get it. I get it. But in the ways he's doing it, I don't. Uh, and the way he's doing it, I don't. But, um, man, my eyes. I know sometimes people be saying you be squinting. Well, that's because when I be th- uh, slinging this Uber, man, they got the bright lights on these damn LEDs. I don't know who created. Oh, no, he's here. I control women. I don't know who created LED lights, but I'll tell you what. I don't really see... I've driven cars with LED lights. Nice cars. Nice cars. Cadillac here recently. A really nice one. Those LED lights ain't no much more better than the what are, what are old school halogen style lights. It ain't like they're super better than anything else, but when you're in a car... And a SUV or a truck rolls up behind you with these LED lights. Uh, it's definitely, you know, it wakes you up. I mean, it makes you squint a little bit. It, it probably takes away the the outer lineage of your cubicle eyelids. I mean, what is going on? I don't understand why in the hell LED light. Now, let me guess. Let me guess. Does these LED lights not last as long? You know, I was thinking about that today. I was looking at all like, you know, because petrol petrochemical industries control the world and everything around you is made made up in some form of fashion from a petrochemical product like even the paints the plastics the, the things here the metal shape they use like oils to meld metal and stuff and i was thinking about about like i was sitting there at a stoplight and i was like that pole right there that goes up made out of steel and metal that holds the lights up across the road you know, I was thinking about biodegradable. I'm like, you could you could make that some kind of hard molded biodegradable material. But then I was like, wait, wait, that's not necessarily good because I know that that steel metal ass pole that's holding all that is gonna last a little a little little longer than than probably that biodegradable. Because I was thinking when I when I said that, I was thinking what's What's round and long and plastic? Sorry, ladies. What, what I didn't say girthy. What's round, long, and plastic that you put in your mouth? Oh my god! That is made from uh, petrochemical materials. That is better than a biodegradable material. And the thing that popped into my head, not my mouth, once again, I'm sorry, ladies, but it is true. I thought of straws, like plastic straws. You put them in your mouth, right? And and they're like, they're petrochemical plastic-based material. They hurt turtles, apparently. And then they came out with the, the biodegradable material straw. And what the hell happened? The damn thing falls apart. It doesn't even work right. It, it falls apart in 10 minutes. Hell, you could have a plastic straw. You know, it's not biodegradable. It lasts forever. You know, so it's like if they were to make like poles and structures and all these replace all the the metal petrochemically based uh, items in the world with a more safe, environmental friendly, biodegradable uh, plastic or material and just made them out of molds because you could do that like poles and stuff that hold stop signs you could if you, you know you could make those out of biodegradable uh materials that they synthetics once again petrochemicals is, is hold on let me continue I'm, I'm gonna get on that but it's like it won't last the same long it won't it won't last the same and i was like hold on wait wait, wait. just a second ago isn't that something we're talking about? They want to talk about biodegradable materials and, and organic, right? Organic. But it's like a biodegradable 
straw is not like organic. It's not like you can just go out there and grow a straw out of the fucking ground. Okay? It's not possible. You can't just grow a straw. So it's like that's not real. Okay? But you can go out into the world and find oil. Right? Like oil, as much as they call it synthetics or or however you want to look at it, oil and petrochemically uh, designed things are based on an organic organic material. So oil-based products are just as organic as a fucking uh, biodegradable straw because you're having to take things that you find in nature and manufacture things. You're having to uh, synthetically create an item out of it. So they're both still like organic. I don't know how we got on this, but I mean, I was just thinking about that today and it's like, you could do it, but will it work better? And is it just a hoodwink? Is it a hoodwink? Is, is some of this stuff rich, rich people and they sat there and was like, hey, maybe they own the oil companies. And when you go look into it, I mean, there's like six people own everything. They were like, let's run a campaign on how our oil stuff is bad. Now, the traditionalists, they will support that. And let's create these new things with all this other stuff that's cheaper to make and easier to find and and more plentiful because we ain't, you know, excavated it yet. Let's go make alternative items with the same things we use with this other stuff. And let's label that as the good things to use and the old stuff, the bad things to use. And we'll have two sides dedicated to spending all the money they have on it and verbally defending it. Let's just do that. And that's how big, I, this is the funny part. This is why I don't get into politics because that's exactly how politics and pretty much everything in the world works. Like people sit back, they own everything and they think of how the consumers will act upon them. You know, that's why when I see a president or something get into office and gas prices go up and everyone blames the president, it's like, well, who won the election? Oh, the guy that this industry didn't support the president of, won the election. So to make that guy look bad in this game, that all they do is just jack the prices up and y'all will blame the, the president when they did it. But it's a scapegoat. It's a way to deflect and manipulate and, and deflection and manipulation is happening a lot. Oh my God. What is happening in the comment sections? I lo- I'm, I'm, I'm speaking with some intelligence, some uh, in- in- intelligence, intellect, really actually thinking about things. And I turn over here and I say, Gravel and the family with it will be exchanging gifts with myself. I am I am honored. They're, they're over here having their own little world conversation. Oil is organic. That's that's what I'm saying, uh, next gen. Oil is an organic substance. It comes from the earth. And, and technically, no matter what we make, no matter what we make, everything, everything on earth is organic. I don't know how to explain this to some people. Everything in the world is organic. It's not like we went to outer space to another planet and got some stuff and brought it over here and mixed it in with our things on the planet. Everything comes from something on the periodic table, right? So everything is organic. I just, uh, I just, I can't handle it. Oh, anyway, l- l- let's talk about some things because there was some things to uh, talk about. Of course, the uh, big news, shocker news for most people today, including myself, uh, was this release of another driver to the high limit sprint car series, Tanner motherfucking Thorson, buddy. Um... And I know people saw this and didn't really think much of it. I mean, some do. I mean, obviously, well, maybe they did think much of it. I, I definitely did. 1.2K um, on the uh, likes of this on... Uh, sorry. On Facebook, just, just verifying. And this is a big sign. Tanner Thorson making the trek over to high limit. This is a... To me, a top-notch, a very top-notch driver uh, in racing. This is another one of those guys who did everything Kyle Larson did, just didn't get Kyle Larson opportunity at the right time. 
didn't fall into the draft for diversity program, didn't have any of these things. But when you go look at the careers, Tanner Thorson, it, it, it's like I say with the midget guys and all this stuff over the years, Spencer Baston did everything Kyle did and then, uh. Tanner Thorson did everything Kyle did and then, uh. Logan Seavey did everything Kyle did and, and possibly better with how he debuted in the truck at Eldora. Uh. So this is a guy... Won the Chili Bowl, uh, performed extremely well at PA Speed Week. I think he was battling for the championship or top five there, and PA Speed Week just showed up in 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 y'all's holy grail of racing area for sprint car racing and, and competed fairly well. I mean, uh, shocked some people. Um, I have seen a few people uh talk about this, and uh, hold on, let me bring it up. There was a comment or two where I had to jump some ass. Um, let's see here. Um, Ryan Harris said 14 high limit now confirmed Chaz Thompson. How many compete the full or complete the full schedule? And this Travis Duffy comes in here. He's definitely Duffy drinking the beers just like old Homer. Uh, he says two or three if they're lucky. This announcement is nonsense. This team does not have the money to run a full tour. Most of these guys are committing because there's no penalty to uncommit. I mean, I think that's the case in the World of Outlaws as well, but uh, this guy is full-blown World of Outlaw traditionalist. He thinks the high limit's going to fail on their fucking asses, buddy. He is, he, he, he has no faith, no faith. I, I am kind of worried here. Hold on, I got to check the comment section. Can, can somebody get a uh, 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 Bra uh, a check on Brad Bowden? Ever since we talked about him in that stripper at, at St. Louis, he has not commented. So can somebody please go and check on Brad Bowden? We need a, 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 we need a head count on a missing person, Brad Bowden, in the comments. I just looked over real quick. This is for his personal safety. We need him alive and well. So will somebody please check on Brad Bowden in the comment sections. He was probably laying down in bed, getting ready to go to sleep, having a few beers or something with the wife, watching TV, and I said that shit. He ain't coming back, guys. He ain't coming back. We should tell him about how Cole Trickle and, and um, Russ Wheeler were driving the van to the place, too. Regardless, back over here, this guy is just drunk. Apparently, he knows the finances of this team. Uh, and everything, this guy is declaring, Tanner Thorson, you may want to send a cease and desist if this is incorrect, but he's declaring that your team, your personal finances, your potential sponsors, all these people, this Travis Duffy is proclaiming to a lot of people that you do not have the money to run a full tour. He has examined your bank account in some way. I mean, tax season's coming up. I don't know how he could know this at this point. Regardless, I come in here with some, you know, commonsensical the uh, theories of the whole situation. I say, Travis Duffy, I completely disagree. This charter system is going to make owning a team profitable. So, yes, when a guy has fallen back too far to lock in a spot halfway through the season or so, he might fall off. But these guys are willing to make as much of an investment as possible to potentially own a charter that will be worth a lot of money. It is all gambling, funny, named High Limit Racing. What I mean by that is like, charter, come and get one. And if you ask how much is it worth, well, we don't know yet. So maybe it is worth something, maybe it ain't, but hey, come and find out. You know, I think Spike made that point, and I'm saying it here with my own thoughts, but I think Spike did say that in a previous episode. And it does hold true. I mean, you don't know. I mean, right now, the charter system is just a word. And it's not going to pay off this charter system technically into the end of 2026. So we won't even have a number on the value of it for three years-ish. So we got to do a full year next year, 24, a full year of 26, and then the full year uh, or uh, a full year of 25 to get the remaining five teams. And then you'll have 10 teams into 26. And at the end of the year, they'll get this revenue share. P possibly is is are they going to wait to the end are they going to give them a bonus to start who knows but that is the gambling aspect uh, aspect in high limit racing with this charter system that seems to be very alluring and and, and most people are, are seeing it that way you heard Kyle talking on his 
uh, Wild West shootout little interview and talking about people don't understand it. He don't understand why people don't like the idea of teams making money. Why is that so hard to believe? But once again, there is not a monetary value actually placed on what owning a charter system is. It's revenue sharing, so revenue has to come in to share it. And usually revenue coming in in a spectator-based sport is random. It's not guaranteed. So that's the gambling aspect. Uh, Travis Duffy says the charter system that pays any money in 24. He goes on to completely bash more and more and more and more, just bashing. He's asking what uh, he asked up here. Um, uh, what crown jewels, I believe he asked up here, what crown jewel races do they have? Um, and, and somebody says, uh, yeah, what crown jewel? Oh, he may, oh z- they have zero crown jewels. And people were asking, what is a crown jewel? What makes a crown jewel? Uh, you know, High Limit has $300,000 to win races. He's like, that's cute. Uh, Houston has a two hundred and fifty. I wouldn't consider that a crown jewel. I'm sure he doesn't either. Um, and then I come in here and I'm like, I would consider the, cr- the gold cup uh, a crown jewel. Um, I think you could probably slot Tuscarora 50 into Crown Jewel. Maybe not. I do think that that's more of a regional clown, uh, Crown Jewel. I definitely do think uh, that, you know, regionally, that the Tuscarora 50 is is right there with, like, the Williams Grove National Open and stuff like that. That's just my opinion outside looking in. I'm sure there's some people like, oh, my God, that's... I can't believe he just spoke that in a sentence. But, I mean, that's how I would see it. Uh, the gold cup is for sure a crown jewel that they have on their event. So regardless, this all spurred from Tanner Thorson being, um, you know, picked up by high limit. And that is dude, Tanner Thorson's a sleeper, man. I mean, Tanner Thorson can really will race cars. He's another Kyle Larson that didn't get a shot and opportunity at a certain point of his career. Now he's running dirt. I mean, that's just what it is. And, 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 when he won the Chili Bowl, I believe that was Larson's last year. So Larson was in the field, and I believe Bell was too. So it's not like he won it on a uh, asterisk year uh, without Bell and Rico and Larson and everyone being there like like last year and this year coming up. Uh, let's look into the comment sections. What do we have in the UB2B comment sections? Oh, my. Spike in here talking about some girls and paying her twenty bucks to go away. Oh my god. We don't even have we don't even have you know logical comments in here. Um okay, let's take a call. Oh god, they just want live calls. We gotta get down to some other stuff before we start calling. All right. Tanner won it all and did nothing. Oh god. Tanner stayed at Gravel's house last year for Christmas. Oh god. Oh my. Okay, but just just you left your asthma inhaler at the club, Spike. Oh no, they're going at it in the chat section. Spike or oh, Spike says Chaz is a white Lizzo, bro. That would be pretty clean. I would take that. I would I would actually uh really appreciate being called a white Lizzo. That actually works for me. Um, let's see here. Okay, so the other thing that happened in the racing world is this thing. This thing happened, ladies and gentlemen. The Yankee Dirt Classic had something. Obviously, this is all on a Barry Bronze Facebook page, runner of the whole uh, XR scenario, owner-operator Um they obviously started out with this original post idea around a hundred K to win um, modified race at Mississippi Thunder Speedway, uh, which I believe sold out. It says right here, 250 K mods or 250 mods entered. Um, not sure. We have a little confession. We did a thing. We opened up the waiting list and added some little guys. We are hovering around 250 modifieds entered for this event and then today, or last night, he made a post. Oh, Are we back on? I know we had a little bit of a hiccup. We had a little bit of a hiccup there. Today, last night, he made a post. 100000 to win in the stock car division. 
Sorry if we had a little hiccup in there. Hopefully the chat reconnects. Are we back online? Okay, yes, we're good. We're good. 100000 to win in stock cars. Doesn't say IMCA stock cars. I'm sure it's some kind of XR stock car, but this is a Yankee Dirt Classic race, traditionally a late model race at 300 Raceway in Farley, Iowa. Next year, though, August 28th to 30th, 100000 to win stock cars, $300,000 purse, 5000 to win qualifiers. That was a day ago. Um, and it wasn't 11 hours ago from now, uh, they had 125 entries, 125 to go. Uh, they made a post about the rules. It's somewhat of a USRA mixed rules type of situation. Um, with US, It's like USRA stock cars, but with a little kink here and there to make it a little more fair, almost like the modified scenario. Um, and it looks like 75 entries left eight hours ago. A race car for sale by Peyton Taylor. Uh, I believe they wanted 42,000. People were asking. I saw Jeff Hoker literally asking. He had two drivers. He needed a car. Uh, 42,500 race ready for these stock cars. That, that A lot of people think of them as a cheaper division. This is why I say even the cheaper divisions of racing in America are, are not necessarily cheap. I mean, this is a stock car. I mean, even your hobby stocks can be 20,000, 30,000. And then uh, you see the countdown here. Stock car entries sold out for this. 250 entered and paid for in this event. Uh, 19 hours total from announcement. It says here no press release. release no f- no flyer. Uh, t- 10 p.m. event announced dropped on a Friday. We'll add or we'll add a waiting list tomorrow. Uh, this is a big risk, but you folks prove this is possible. And then this was the post that uh, I actually was, I made a video about it, but it, it didn't, uh, I, this actually came out before, or hold on, did he remove it already? Possibly. I was, uh, I was gonna, I made a video, I was saying, how is this uh, event possible, uh, possible, uh, just because this is traditionally not a, the stock car division is traditionally not a fan. It's not a front gate show. It's a back gate show most of the time with these non-premier classes. Um, and it's going to be hard to get fans and and make it viable for an event of this magnitude paying this amount to be able to host it, to have it. But the more I started thinking, in a way, you know, that's when racing started going downhill to me personally was when it switched to being a backgate show. Now, I know some people have heard me talk about my reasoning as to why we lost respect in dirt racing, the crowds going down, and and due to those crowds going down in the 90s, there was a shift 2000-ish that started turning the sport into a backgate show where you started putting more cars on, on the docket, more classes were created. Because the fans went away on the front, so they started having to pay for everything with the gate in the back. Now, even an event like this, with just the entries alone, could pay ten thousand or fifteen and be a huge show. But at a hundred thousand, you got to figure out where's the rest coming from. And I have a theory. Even though I think IMCA stock cars are great, I still say streaming IMCA stock cars or even modifieds. And and sorry, not IMCA, but stock cars. I guess in this case, or even modifieds is just. Hard to watch because of the cars being so slow on camera. I think in person, I think this event and the event up at Mississippi Thunder are great to attend in person. But on a camera, I just feel like these the cars just look too slow. And people have been accustomed to looking at Supers and, and 410 Sprint cars. And maybe a lot of people get really uh, down on these classes when they match them. Most of the time, we're watching these big premiere events, like a big Super Late Mall event, and the Modifieds will be there. And you can literally see how much slower they are. And it's just... Hard to get into it. But I think something like this is not just... not. I'm not going to say aiming towards being a backgate show, but it's traditionally existing on a backgate show. I think that something like this has also opened the door to backgate streaming. And what I mean by backgate streaming is in these when the sport went to backgate 
funded events. If you went up into the grandstands at those back gate events, and I've done it through experience, I'm not just guessing here. You go up in the stands and most of the people in the damn stands are a buddy or a friend or a relative of the people in the pitting area. And that's why they are there. It's not necessarily to see this great badass flying back and forth slide job city kind of high speed action. It's to support their friend or their buddy or their cousin or their uncle. And that's why they're there in the grandstand and they don't want to or can't afford a pit pass to be in the pits with them. So they sit in the stands. So, what I mean by that is when you have a multitude of people in this event, 250 already purchased, more than likely when this said 100,000, you got 250 entries from across the country. I believe when they had the modified thing announced, there was a post of uh, where or how how many uh, states and areas that the modifieds has entered for that modified race up in, in Mississippi Thunder Speedway, and, and that's that's exactly what I'm talking about as far as a back gate streaming event. A back gate streaming event is all of those people that at these traditional back gate shows in this part of the country or that part of the country that are usually in that grandstand are not going to be able to afford, or for whatever reason, be able to afford or, or, or cannot attend the actual race itself. But since there's 250 back gate style drivers at an event, now you're going to have the fans of all them backgate drivers from across the country buying the stream to watch their friend or their buddy or their cousin or their uncle. Or it's the same story, just in the digital sense. And that's how I think that this can be viable because that is a lot of people. I mean, backgate family and friends is, is, is a decent amount of people. Now, it, 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 it sucks for these classes, like, well, modifieds I would consider premier, but a lot of people don't. Um, it sucks for a, a stock car class, especially because stock car racing puts on possibly the best racing you can see. I mean, the one I watched it at the door in the desert two years ago was just unbelievable. Unbelievable back and forth, side by side, three wide, just great, great, great racing. But it doesn't have that speed. It doesn't have that pizzazz that makes our eyeballs light up so much in just natural human tendencies. So, Maybe there are some things that are going to maybe potentially out here. There's going to be some pretty big badass names on the list racing here. Um, Ricky Thornton Jr. I saw, I think he said he can't do it. But I would assume, I would assume that there's going to be some really nice uh, drivers involved in this. I, I would assume that this is, is going to be worth front gate attention. I think stock cars are worth front gate attention. But logistically, I think that back gate is a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a more logical scenario for it to work when you got guys coming from all over the country and all those local little fans and little support groups can't travel. Those are the ones that are going to be buying the stream more so than the sprint car late model fan who wants to watch the badass racing. Now, another thing is obviously the entries here, uh, you know, 250 entries. I believe when I went to look at it, it was 500 to enter. So, I mean, we could all do like a little math on that. I believe it's $250,000 that was uh, consumed here in entry fees. Yes, that's the math on that. Uh, so, 250 entries, 500 at entry. That's 125000 If you consider this race here and the modified race, that's 250 I guess. I did confirm with uh, Barry Braun earlier that that was five hundred as well. So right now, before the year ends, which is the weird part to me, I mean, you would think you would want to do this on the other side of the tax season, so you don't have to worry about it until the next year. So it's kind of weird to try to pull all this in before the year ends. Uh, but regardless, a quarter of a million dollars in entry fees has been generated from this modified show and this stock car show. Now, however, that's getting dispersed. I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's a $300,000 purse for this. The hundred twenty-five dollars ain't covering it. Definitely does help. And I don't even know about the person on the other side of the business, but I'm sure that it's a lot. So between these entry fees, the back gate streaming audience, not just the back gate audience, and then potentially some bigger names jumping into this and maybe some people wanting to see something they've never seen before. $100,000 for a stock car race? Are you kidding me? I mean, this is giving the little guys something. 
This is and this is something that Barry Brown has, has done over the years traditionally uh, in in a public sense at least is give the little guys opportunity and give them a stage and give them op- uh, give them a chance to race for big man money and I, I'll say it all the time and I'll still stand by it. I guarantee you in this race there's 250 guys entered into this race. Probably 35, 40 of them are better than or just as good as Kyle Larson. They just didn't have the money or opportunity to advance into the racing world. All they had at the age of 18 or 25 was $42,000 to give away for a race car. That, that That's the difference. It's not that they sucked. It's that they didn't have, you know, 300000 at 12 or 14 for a, a midget renter ride. So this is back to people say racing's not fair, but that's also when I sit back and say, well, it's not fair, but we can we, we we can understand all of these things, right? And fairly judge racing, correct? We can fairly judge people, like, I, like what I just told you about the money and the and the ages. This is very factually true. So I'm not going to sit here and unfairly judge any of these stock car drivers as less of a talent. Than a Kyle Larson until Larson goes over here and beats him. But I'm this is a race. If I'm Kyle Larson's marketing directors or people like of those sorts, you stay away from this. You 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 better you better you better stay the hell away from this event. Any of these, you know, the, it, it's funny. These are called stock cars. The drivers of these stock cars are better than the actual drivers of NASCAR stock cars. These are real men stock cars. This ain't rich, preppy little rich league uh, stock cars. So I would strongly suggest any NASCAR driver, any driver in the world, and and particularly Kyle Larson because he's known for being so great in everything. Just how I say in dirt versus NASCAR, it's a pond to an ocean full of sharks. You know, you open yourself up to... So much more competition and, and players of the game in, in, a, in a 410 sprint car in a super late model. That same effect happens when you jump from a super or a 410 down to an IMCA or XR, whatever stock car. All of a sudden, like I say, not everyone can afford a, a, a $10 million cup situation, but they could afford a $100,000 sprint car. A lot of people also can't afford that $100,000 sprint car, but they can afford that $40,000 stock car. So the, 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 the ocean gets even bigger. Now you're talking about Baltic to Pacific. You know, do you really want to get out there where the whales are? So, like, like I said, if it, it, this is an event where, where some of you big marquee drivers, you may hear stock cars think lower division, but the, the talent in... The, lo- the lower the division you go, the better you get. And stock cars probably is where it tops out. I mean, I don't want to sit here and watch cars go around the track at 25 miles an hour in some four-banger or hobby stock. I'm sorry. If you're good enough in those classes, somebody should give you an opportunity in a stock car. So if you ain't made it stock car racing by the age of 35, you probably ain't that damn good. That's just what I would say. But this 250 driver list here is going to be full of some hitters. Full of some Larson-esque guys who, once again, just didn't have these monetary situations to advance into the racing world. All they had was $40,000 to throw out the window at 25 or 30. They saved up. They went and worked for it. Oh, my God, they must suck. <laughs> that That's the logic. And, and once again, I know racing's not fair and all these monetary things aren't fair, but we could be intelligent enough to allow ourselves to have knowledge to fairly judge things. And that's what I do, and it drives y'all insane, because y'all, y'all are drunk on idolization. That's basically the truth. Let's see what the... I, I'm, I'm sure the kittens are crying in the in the comment section. Oh, my God. Look at them. Look at them. They're already... They're already, already crying. Chaz like getting out there with the whales. Wow, that's you can't. I shouldn't have ever said a comment like that with um with Spike in the building. That is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. 
Okay, it, and, and I just got some information. It does look like they are going to have the XR Super Series there on the final night. Y'all saw that pop-up. That was Bucky, uh, a former, I guess, member of the XR crew. Uh, he was mentioning on how the last, I guess it's the last night. Where is the three-day dates? It was in the original post. Uh, the logo's badass, by the way. Whoever does the logos for XR, they do a really good job. 28th through the 30th is the stock car race. Oh, okay. So that even makes it a little bit different. Um, 28th through the 30th is the stock car uh, induendo. And the 30th will be 100,000 win stock cars. And then the 31st, based on this, the 31st will be uh, the... Yankee Dirt Classic for the XR Super Series. Of course, the Super Series schedule has extremely condensed to what we have seen over the years. Um, extremely condensed. Um, just a few races in the series next year. Maybe not appreciative or something. I don't know. I mean, I could see how some of these super guys or 410 guys are snobby and you throw all your money and heart out there and they don't respect it. Oh, God. I, don't, I need to stop for I say too much there, but... Um, it does seem like XR is starting to do some other stuff. Screw you, snobby ass late model guys. We'll go spend our money over here. And these guys, these stock car guys, I mean, they'll love it. They'll, they, they will, they'll, they'll eat it up. Uh, nobody gives them this amount of attention. But anyways, if you are looking for some speed for your streaming, save all your money for the final night on the 31st, apparently. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, I, I mean, like I said, these are events, in my opinion, worth attending. I, I don't think that, I think that's with some of these classes out here, guys, it just, it, the speed's just so slow that guy, you can notice it. You can literally, I, I said it and I've said it about modifies the last few months and a lot of people have agreed. I think what kills them is it just looks so slow and they're not slow. I'm not saying you're slow out there, but on a camera in the traditional streaming sense, the cars just look fucking slow. They look slow. It, it not even. It, I don't know if we could change perspectives. Can we put a camera at the fence line so you can whip on by or something? I don't know what you can do. And the stock cars are definitely slower than the modifieds. But it sucks because both divisions have amazing racing. It does suck because both divisions do have amazing ass racing. So definitely an event worth attending. Streaming, eh. I don't know. I don't know. But Super Series is going to be there on the uh, 31st, I guess. So 100,000 stock cars. Who knows how much the, the late models will pay on the 31st, but it looks like it is going to be the XR Super Series. So what's that? Eight, nine, ten, a four-day event that this Yankee Dirt thing's looking to be. And I don't know if they're going to add in a practice night or if that 28th is a practice night uh, because it does say 5,000 win qualifiers and then 100,000 win stock cars. Qualifiers would usually mean a night before. So it's listed three days, so I would assume it would be practice, qualifying night, final night for the stock cars, and then the Super Series on the uh, Saturday. Or, wait, what day is that? I would assume that's going to be a Saturday uh, next year. Let's see here. Yeah, that'll be a Saturday. So this is a Wednesday through Saturday dated event in total with the XR Super Series. This 100000 to win event actually concludes on a Friday. Uh, and for you sprint car people, I believe this is two weeks after the Knoxville Nationals as well. Uh, so a, a lot of things being spun up there. Anyways, let's look at these chats before we open up the damn callers. Oh, God, these callers can be interesting. I just wanted to give y'all something to think about before we open up these damn uh, call-ins. It could be interesting. It could get extremely intense tonight. There's people who really, really hate me. I didn't know how much, but they really, really do. Uh, below the belt stuff. Hide the kids. Hide the wife. Underline that twice. I mean, it is bad. Ginger Sweet wants 10 races with 500K to win. I mean, if I, did my, if I had a business model, if somebody could give me if I, I would take $25 million and take the dirt world over instantly. I would, I would take that $25 million. I would spend 20 of it in the purses for 20 different races, and I would do $5 million in marketing, real marketing, not BS, crybaby, Facebook, Twitter marketing, but integrated with society-style marketing. 
and it would instantly take it over. You'd have a nat. Uh, it is funny. Dirt racing technically doesn't have a national series. If you if you look at it in a sense, it doesn't have a a national level. It doesn't have like meets or true nationals where it's like in a leveled up style of an event. Uh, but anyway. Here's the callers. We got the, the Mike Harrison graphic still on there. Like I said, I've been thrashing and, and dashing over here, literally. Um, but the damn numbers on the screen, I can't believe I did it. Oh, my. I can't believe I did it. Oh, my. The numbers on the screen. Who is going to be our first caller? The line is it, it, it's open, guys. The line's open. Maybe that Huffman guy is going to call in and Call me an asshole or something. Oh, no. We got a 717 number in the building. 717, that's a PA area code. Who the hell are you? Hey, man. My name is Darius. I'm just a big fan of the show, big fan of sprint cars. Let's talk some high limit, brother. Okay, high limit. What do you want to talk about? What's the deal? Yeah, so I know a couple weeks back you had some kid on here. He's from Pennsylvania, talking about all these guys. Like, oh, yeah, Dylan Fugman could be a good guy to step up because with Brett Marks now on high limit, Pennsylvania's screwed. You know, like, from head to toe, we're, we're, we're screwed. And I really think that at this point going forward, we have no one to lean on other than Anthony Macri. God forbid that relationship with him and his father stay afloat, you know? Yeah, it and wasn't to supposed truth, to. Nobody saw really that coming. It, yeah, yeah. And, um, I, I was a little bit surprised, I'll be honest, when uh, Brett Marks uh, kind of announced that, you know, he was uh, going to be in high limit. But I was listening to the videos, and you're like, yeah, I'm hearing some things, and, you know, it, it makes sense. But I also don't think he's not going to be the actual true badass that he is to us right now. I think it's going to be a little bit similar to what his stint was like with the Outlaws, where he may not run actually as good as we expect him to. Because the last couple of years, he's been doing races on his own terms, the way he wants it. Now he's got a fixed schedule. Like, I feel like when you are able to pick your own races, you kind of have an advantage with yourself on knowing what to expect. And now he'll be going to a couple of tracks, maybe outside of his element, where maybe he may or may not be that top contender we know of him to be. Well, I mean, I get that. He's used to picking and choosing and doing it. And I heard he's kind of moody. And so that uh -huh. also attunes to that kind of style guy too. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting. I don't know because it ain't a, it ain't a full outlaw gig. You know, it, it, you you are less yeah. gravel. You are less mosquito. You are less shots. You are less salesy. You are less hot and child. I mean, there's a, that's a pretty nice stable of drivers that Brett Marks had in, uh, you know issues getting around. But you take those guys out, not saying high limits roster is any kind of junk because it, it ain't. It's very strong, but it still doesn't uh, have those guys. You know, it has some other guys, but Brett Marks is used to used to racing up against uh, adjusted Peck. You know. He's used to, you know, slapping right. him around. He's used to slapping Tyler Courtney's around. He's used to slapping those he's not used to slapping Brad around. You know, he's he, he's not used to slapping Corey Day around. I mean, there's some guys in there he's not used to just manhandling. But the guys he traditionally yep. has issues with, they're not there, you know. Um except Brad and then I, I'm assuming you would have to put Rico into the same um try sorry, just trying to get the names up onto the screen. I would assume you would put Rico up in there as a guy he'd have have trouble with. So if we go down the list here on who uh, uh, Brett Marks would have trouble with Brad Sweet. He'd have trouble with them. Jacob Allen, no. Casey oh, yeah. Kane, no. Zeb Wise, no. Corey Elias, and no. Brendan Crouch, who the hell is that guy? Rico Abreu, okay, a little okay. trouble, a little trouble. Justin Peck, that that's a even. That's almost a, that's almost even. But you would yeah. have to put you would have to put Marks above him right now. You know, you would have to say that Marks yeah. handles Peck on a consistent basis. Corey Day, yeah. That can be fast. That can definitely be fast, especially when it's his night. He can do it. Oh, I so. think he's. I think he. Uh, if he could get the right support, Justin Peck's. You know, a hot and child, but maybe better. You know, he's got that same crazy mm -hmm. style of driving, uh, but I feel like he's a little more conservative in the right moments than than Sheldon. But we'll get to see. It's gonna be the first time we've actually seen him go. You know, outside of that All Star. But I'm talking about like national. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, but so far, we only got two people that Marks is not used to manhandling. 
Uh, and Peck is a toss-up. Yeah. He's kind of used to handling them. Now, Corey Day, it's a question mark. You don't know. I mean, you don't know how much Brent would put it to Corey Day. I do think Corey Day, unbelievably, I, I'm saying this, I do think that Corey Day is a little more versatile than Brent Marks. I don't yeah. know if that is... I, 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 I will... Go ahead. I, I, I will agree with you there. I, I think Corey Day is going to have his, his his races where he is going to be pretty dominant. I, I feel it coming. I think that this series is yeah. going to kind of, you know, allow him to rise to the occasion a little bit higher than we think. I definitely feel like Corey Day is he he's more open to being adaptable at these different tracks that they're going to go to. And I'm not saying Brent Marks can't be. Uh, I just think that that those short track guys, those people come from short tracks. It seems like it's a little easier for them to get used to half miles and different style, bigger tracks than it is for guys used to bigger tracks, trying to get adapted to smaller ones. Um, Oh yeah. And especially when you're young and up and coming. So Corey day, will say a push on Corey day. Mm -hmm. Spencer based Yep. I, I think Brent Marks is better than Spencer based just consistently. I think he's better yep. than Wyndham is the next guy on the list. Parker Price Miller manhandles him. Tanner Thorson's this big question mark now. But but we get to the yeah. end here, and, and we only got two guys that I see Brent Marks finishing third behind, and that's Rico and Sweet. I mean, maybe Day, maybe maybe Peck, but there's only four guys that you're worried about, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that definitely is true. I just think that, like, like you were saying, it was just about the track styles and him not being as – adaptable to possibly some other track he's never been to, I think might throw him off a little bit. But, I mean, I definitely hope, as far as from Pennsylvania standpoint, he does the best, you know. Now, we're kind but, of being uh, unfair to him, to be honest. I mean, his first World of Outlaw yeah. event win was Wilmot in Wisconsin, was Brent Marks. Well, you know. That is very it true. It seems yeah. like we forgot of yep. another era of Brent Marks, who was on the road with the Outlaws full-time. You know, that happened yep. already. Yep. It's just he wasn't that he wasn't what he is today, you know. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. So Yeah, I could definitely see that. But yeah, I just, you know aside from all of that, yeah, I mean I definitely hope Marks can, you know, certainly give these boys the best because I know I feel like the rest of PA I, I just think we're kind of pretty much stuck as field fillers at this point when it comes to these larger events. I mean yeah, I guess who's um, your young hope I, right now? What, what, Borden? Well, I mean, yeah, we have Borden. I think that he's got a couple years left before he can be a, a top up-and-coming contender. Um, I, I don't think Macri out of the 39M for most of this year did him any good. I don't think it's going to do him any bad. I think he'll kind of fall back into where he was, which is not a bad thing going forward. But um, other than that, I mean, we have Lance Deweese. He's going to be in the 12 car. I've seen that car run from time to time. I think it put Billy Dietrich one time starting on the pole at Williams Grove on a Friday night, but who knows if that car has speed because I feel like a lot of fans, it's kind of one of those forgotten cars in the area where we just sort of like, oh, yeah, forgot that car exists. We see it maybe once a month. Yeah, and that's a short um, car or whatever, right? Yeah, yep. Well, yeah, I mean, the I car know, is what I you put into it. Cars, but, if they could get yeah. the support, the the, the money, the – a motor sponsor or this guy or a shock guy or, you know, you can make, it don't matter what wrap you put on these cars nowadays. If you could put the combination of the right chassis, right motor and shock package together, I mean, you could pretty much make any car look good no matter what's, you know, stickered on the body and the wing. Depends on what they get. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking they're banking on getting more support um, from people, you know, by having Lance, you know. That's yeah, what I'm I mean, he, he he's he's been a big, big staple to PA, especially since kind of hot net pass. I mean, it's like them two dominated the area for years, you know, and he kind of pretty much is the guy that's been kind of holding that big PA posse flag and really the one that sort of, uh, you know, kind of brings the whole area, I guess, together, if you will. But yeah, I mean, I, I think Lance still has in the tank. He damn near almost won with a 39 M earlier this year at port, mm -hmm. um, you know, Aside from that, I think Dietrich at this point is pretty much watched. I didn't see that coming, but he really hasn't done a whole lot up until the very end of the year. Um, but and then you know you, you got them born and cooking, but he's on the back burner. He's going to have to warm up a little while, I think, until he's a serious, serious competitor nationwide. But um, I mean, aside from that, like I, I'm just trying to think for, from a local standpoint because 
for me, my situation, I'm almost finished up with college. Like, I'll be able to go to races Friday night finally. And, um, like, who am I going to go see now? You know, TJ Stutz, Kyle Moody. Not that they're bad guys or nothing, but it's like, you know, I feel like even the local level of competition weekly is not what it once was. You yeah, know? It's, and it's, it's just, it, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was it, Dietrich's it's gonna point. Be, it, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But but yeah, he should have just, a big uh, year now. A guy like Dietrich should should look good for once again. You know. Yeah, I mean potentially. You know, um, I think he pretty much has. Uh, you know, no disrespect to Freddie Jr., but he kind of has him in the holler and it's just that little incident. You know, but. Uh, I mean, I really don't think that there's anyone else who's going to give Dietrich a run for his money at maybe like Williams Grove, per se. I think Lincoln, of course, is still probably going to be dominated by Freddie Jr. Um, well, it surprised me, know, the gravel but, show, um, when when they were asking who's a, who's a really good driver out of PA, and David Gravel picked Freddie Raymer as the hardest one, Jr. Yeah, I mean, he, he, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm an, I race RC cars. We have a lot of these, and we call them one-track wonders, and I pretty much think that's what Freddie Jr. is. I mean... He's just dominant right there at Lincoln. He hasn't done nothing really at Williams Grove from what I've seen and witnessed, unlike his father who actually has. Um, I, I don't know what's happening there. I just, you know, I just kind of, I mean, from a fan standpoint, I wish everyone to be competitive. You know, I, I wish to see Freddie Rimmer, you know, jump out the gate and, you know, have a run for everybody's money, you know, but he just, he just doesn't have it outside of Lincoln, it seems like. And I, I just, you know, other than Lincoln, he, he really hasn't been competitive anywhere else over the mm. last couple of years. You don't think so? I don't know. Maybe I'm not watching everything, but that's just uh, that's just kind of what I'm seeing, at least in the area. But yeah. Okay. And so your concern is that is that PA uh, weekly racing scene? I yeah, I think it's, Who, who's I, I think it's kind of at a lower point. Yeah. I, I really think it needs to step up. It should. And I, I certainly hope it does. You know, I think there's some talent that's kind of, you know, rising potentially, but it's just, it, it's going to, I think, be a long time till we see it. I hope we get this chance to see it because I don't know how long it's going to take, but I think it's going to be more than just a couple of years. Okay. Well, well, who would be a guy coming up though? Who's, who is even, you're saying you just don't know at all. I, I mean, I, I would say potentially Borden, like I said, and I think if Macri can, you know, kind of, keep his head down and focus like he has been. Or I, I, again, I don't know that Macri situation, but if that whole team can stay together, they can definitely be a threat, him and Borden. Um, and I think if Lance is stable, I mean, I think there's some potential there. But other than that, I mean, it, it's just, yeah. It, it's I feel like the, the top-level talent is staying out a little bit more. And with, with Mars kind of being out of that scene, or even the last couple of years he's been out of the scene a little bit more and more, I feel. I mean, it's just, it's not going to be... Uh, it's not gonna. It's not gonna look good at the national level. I feel going forward. Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, all but, right. Is that is that what you wanted to yeah, say? I mean, I I, I I hope we do better. Yeah, I hope that we uh, can kick some outlaw ass and some high limit ass at some point. Hopefully, uh, we can get them a little bit this year. But uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, outlaws ain't a port no more. But not that that matters. We still got high limit. But uh, you know. I just hope that PA can at least stay afloat because I really feel like we're not in the best spot over the last, I would say, decade. Okay. I mean, you're left with Danny Dietrich. That would make anybody sad. So, I mean, I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt. But you, I mean, all we get is Twitter, so that's cool. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. Uh, uh, he's one of those dish it but can't take it guys, I feel like, sometimes. Yeah, I, I I don't know how I feel. I got a buddy that's a Dietrich fan. I don't, you know. Eh, you don't want to cause the problem? Eh, there's nothing to cause. I'm just there for racing, you know? I'm, I, I'm not a, I'm, I don't hate anybody. I'm not a fan of anybody specifically, but yeah, Dietrich's Dietrich, you know? This is true. Dietrich is Dietrich. All right, there's some other callers yep. coming all in. I guess we'll, we'll we'll change her up and see what they, uh, the people in the stupid chat have to say. Yep. Hey, cool, brother. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Hey, what was your name? Where are you from again? Uh, Darius. I'm from just outside of Hershey, PA. Okay. Okay. So you're over there near that uh, college. Yeah, there's a couple of them around. Yeah, finishing that crap up. And then, uh, you know, still going to see dirt racing all summer long and stuff. So it be a good time. 
You're going to have to drive now. You're going to have to travel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, I have, yeah. I've been doing a little bit of that. I'll have to try and uh, head out to Lernerville this year, too. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for calling cool, in, there. Hey, you got you have a good one, all right? All right. Yeah, see ya. That was Darius. We missed a call from a 209 number. I believe this. Oh, he called right as we hung up. Thank you for thank you for the respect. Who is it that is so nice to the world outside that's calling? Hey, what's up, Chaz? Who is it? What's going on? Hey, man, this is Walter uh, calling out of California. And I just want to talk about, I want to tell you, Corey Day is going to be someone to deal with in the high limit. I've I watched so. him race out here on the West Coast. I mean, I've watched the kid grow up and drive out here, and, I mean, the kid whoops ass in 360s, 410s. I mean, it doesn't matter what track he goes to, where he races, and we got some good competition out here. I mean, you know, we got Justin Sanders out here. We got Shane Golubic out here. We we got some good local drivers out here in California still. And I mean, this kid's good. Uh, I mean I I, I I don't disagree. But I I, I I I and once again I just put Corey Day up there with Brent Marks. I mean that's saying something. I mean where do you want us to put Corey Day? Because that's the only guy coming out, right? As of now. Well, I think Justin Sand. I mean, honestly, for me, because, you know, we have our, our 410 sprint series over here called King of the West. Right. And I hope we keep Justin Sanders here. I really hope he don't go to the national scene. You hope he doesn't I mean, I leave? Him. I hope he does, because I, I, I'm being greedy. And I want to watch him on our local stage. You know what I mean? I love why I go tracks up and down the state and I watch locally and I don't want to lose him. Really? You're, you're in love I mean, with Justin. I mean, I love watching good racing. You know what I mean? I'm, it's like you're talking about, you know, when you, you watch hobby stocks, street stocks or modifieds on streaming, you know what I mean? It, they, you don't get the same effect watching them at the racetrack, you know what I mean? And uh, I love being at the racetrack watching good racing, you know what I mean? Right. Is that like me at the Well, the all's tracks is what helps. I got good race tracks, you know, tight quarter miles. Right. That really helps. I don't know, but uh, actually, the so the stock and dirt track, the reconfiguring this year. Yes, I saw that. And, uh, it's going to be a quarter mile, and uh, they're playing some good dirt. And uh, Tony Nassetti, he's he's the guy who runs the track. And, uh, I mean, I'm really hoping that it's going to be a lot a lot better track. I kind of miss, you know, it was a big track. I liked it being a big track. But, it, I mean, it was rough as hell. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've been there a I couple mean, times. Thought, that was my actual, I believe that was actually my... Uh... Oh, I was going to say it was my first time to California, but no, that's when that fucking Ron from Sprint Car Fan called me out, and I, I drove from Daytona. My first time over there, I actually went to uh, Bakersfield, believe it or not. That was my first time over there, but um, Stockton is, is like you said, it used to be, it, it was it, it was like the dome, you know? It was like really ruddy, cars in the air. Um it, it, so hopefully they figure it out because it definitely was something. Something was definitely wrong with it before. Yeah, it was that turn one, turn two. You know, I mean that rut. They hit that rut going in one and two. I mean it just tore up a lot of cars. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean it that tore up a lot of money. So, you think to to kind of close up here? You think Corey Day is going to do something? You're hoping that no one, I guess no one else leaves from over there because Sanders would be the next guy that most people would think deserves to leave. Right. I mean, he's a top guy. You know what I mean? Like I'm just saying for my own personal being gritty, loving good California racing, want him to stay out here. You know what I mean? On a weekly basis. 
Well, but you are going to have about two months of, like, badass sprint car racing over there, and y'all have never experienced that. Y'all have usually just got two or three weeks, and then, sorry for the the feedback, it seems like he's got something on the, I don't know if I'm on speakerphone or something like that, but y'all used to only have two or three weeks, y'all had a spring swing, had, I know you had a spring swing, you had a fall swing, but it, it wasn't for long at all, um, and and it seems like though this year you're gonna have a solid two months of like premier badass sprint car racing that y'all ain't had y'all y'all haven't had it like that in how long I mean you're gonna have two a long time I mean you got a hundred thousand your mic is better I don't know what you just did but it's all better now um yeah well I had you on speakerphone okay 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 that that's beautiful now you sound like a normal human being before you sounded like you were you know gobbling dicks I thought I was about to call you my, never mind. Uh, but anyway, um, no, no, that she doesn't. No, no disrespect to anyone in my past. But regardless, uh, there's two one hundred thousand dollar races over there. Uh, you know, or well, yeah, two one hundred thousand if you count Skagit, and then eighty three thousand at Tulare, uh, and then sprinkle in all the other races that are happening as well with the Outlaws and High Limit. Y'all are. It, it, if if y'all had to give up Corey Day and Justin Sanders for that for that two month string, I almost think that's a fair trade. Yes, but you know what? We already got it, so why we gotta give up Justin Sanders for that? Well, most people would no say. What. I mean, Broke Joe thinks Justin Sanders needs to get out of there because of the California politics behind the scenes with the Catings and all these different uh, people who oh, yeah, unfairly no judge races. So that's why a lot of people say he needs to get out of there because of the. Uh, scenario the 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 nepotism monarchy that runs the racing scene over there. Yep, yeah, the Kings are uh, a very big. Um, you know, I mean, that's. But we all know, like you said, Chad, the politics are everywhere in racing. And, they are. Um, but it is an island politics, out there. Yeah. You can get away with stuff over there. You know. Yep, I mean it's kind of a uh, who you know and what your last name is. Right, and, and Sanders, you know, and, well, Broke things. Joe says Sanders comes up in there a nobody and starts whooping their ass, and they just haven't haven't liked them ever since. Yeah, that, that that's very true. That's a very true assessment. Right, he fucked up and, their fucking um, private little uh, showboat party with all their buddies, and, and they don't like it. And that's why I love watching. I love watching my hair kicking everybody's ass. So, so that I mean, for like, you, for you, that is part of the entertainment. For you, the entertainment of Justin Sanders being there, not just as having a really badass driver, but sitting there in the stands, knowing that hey, when that Justin Sanders beats Shane Golubic or Tim or or Bud Kading or any of these guys, that means more. Than yep, just he beat him on the track. Right? There's a there's a backstory to him beating him. That's what yep. you enjoy. Both. I, I enjoy both, honestly. Right. Uh, we did have a comment here from Howard Ferguson. Wow, long time no see. This is a lie, Spike. Nicole is not the Chaz's side chick. This is ridiculous. We actually had to talk <laughs> about you, Spike. I'm sending this picture. Wow. Wow. No, they're all over you. No, they're not. Trust me. If they were all over me, I wouldn't be here. No, I'm just playing. Actually, that's possibly true. Oh, wait, there's another Nicole. I thought he was talking about Nicole from uh, uh, PA. Is this another Nicole Edmund, Edmonds? Wait, there's two Nicoles. Now, that could be an interesting situation if you got two Nicoles, one on each arm. All right, I'm thinking too much. Uh, Anyways, uh, we got. Uh, what was, was the topic yeah. of discussion? Spike is so good at ruining conversations. <laughs> um, with 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 slobber knocker, fucking trash talk, piece of shit. Anyway, uh, he says the 360 scene is great, but 410, 410 team owners back east or on a national scene want drivers with fourteen four ten experience. Um, I, I the three sixty they don't want three sixties over there no more though, right? Brad Sweet and them are they're trying to push 360s out. Everybody's trying to push 360s right, you know, out. But Even but up here in the so Midwest. Hold on, hold on. Though. Even over here in the Midwest, there is a national push right now to get rid of 360s. I hope everybody knows this. If you haven't noticed it, you haven't paid attention to all the politicking in the background. But there is a national push to get rid of 360s. And I'll tell you what, 360 racing did it to its damn self. 
when they started making those 360s cost 5,000 cheaper than a 410, you know, and, 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 and you could have so much an advantage with that badass 360 where you can have an average 410 and on most tracks have a chance to compete. Maybe not in an outlaw format where qualifying is everything. That's why I hate their format. It's junk. It's for the nepotism monarchy powerhouse teams that qualifying matters so much because in qualifying in 410 racing, if that sets your whole night, then yeah, the, the poor team can't keep up. If you don't invert or anything, then the, the poor guy who ain't got the $75,000 motor ain't going to have a chance. But exactly. in typical formats where that's not the case, even not even an invert format, but a draw format, a a, a, a a budget 410 has a chance you, to, to to do some damage. And 360s just, just outpriced themselves. 360 racing was great when the best motor on the block was $35,000. When that 360 motor went past $35,000... It, it destroyed the it just it destroyed it. It was it was on its way to its death. And 305 racing will do that as well once that some bitch starts crossing into the too uh too much uh too expensive. Once it starts getting into 30, you're you're fucked. Because you could get a decent 410 used for 37, 40,000. We've seen Danny Dietrich back to him post used motors that he's won World of Outlaw or, or one big event. Sorry, he ain't ever world well, he's won World of Outlaws, but it was all luck. He's won big well, PA think, sprint car races with with relatively affordable 410 motors. So everyone wants 360s gone, is what I'm saying. Well, I tell you what, the 360s are still big over here in California right now. I mean, I mean, we'll have you can have four to five different tracks playing the same night in California. From you have Marysville, Placerville. Uh, I mean, you could have Chico running, at, and they're all getting 20-plus right. cars. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, 360s are out here. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot more 360s than there is 410s out here right but now. But they're trying to get rid of them. And uh, I see your point, how they're, you know I mean? Like you said, the motors are just... They're just putting more in the motor, so guys are like, well, if we're going to put that much, we'll also have a 410. Well, and this is the point, and, and Ducky just said it, and that's what I'm all for, too. He says, I wish our 360 or 305 scene was bigger. We are putting a car together for this coming season. I think that's the way to go. I honestly think in the future of sprint car racing, the right way to do it, if we're gonna if we're gonna actually set this up, and I even talked to Brad Sweet about this, because I've been wanting to put something together for the 305s. I, I I was really close, and we could still possibly do it if the right things fall in line. I was really close in doing a 305 sprint car speed week myself, putting together and doing something for Florida, because it would just it would be a banger. Uh just a couple ins and outs away from doing it, a couple conversations, it would be a banger. Cause I do believe. That 305s and 410s is going to be the future of sprint car racing. Uh, and, and and some people, what do you just say? Yeah, and it's ass, all ass backwards because jet drivers are rejected or respected. I don't know what that means. But regardless, I think 305 to 410, you need your affordable division. You need a tryout division for 410 right, racing. Like beginner, beginner division. Right. You like need a stock of... Of sprint cars. Correct, correct. And 360s was that when it was 25000 for a competitive motor. It was that. Right. Now, it's like, it's like a modified now, and a late model. Right. It's stupid. It's dumb. Almost in the fendered world. Get rid of the modifieds. Stock cars and late models. Because the modified just costs that much. And you see the car counts lean towards that. Uh, in the stock cars, way more way more stock cars than full, full-blown modifieds. And you see that even out there, y'all may not have the case, but nationally, there's way more 305s than there are 360s nationally. Over there, it may not be the case, but nationally, it's true. Yeah, but I heard we have, the only ones that have 305s is down south. Down well, south, and that's because y'all been putting so much. You've been putting, you've, the problem is you've had poor people trying to race 360s and rich people dominating it. That's what's happened. But you ain't got a class for the affordable money. people. That's my point. You ain't got a dominant class for the affordable. Those people who are dominating 360s with their big fucking banks should be running 410s. And the people who can't afford it and just want to get going and try to win and try to be right, somebody should have big, a 305. God big, God, God big dominates 360 where he runs. 
Well, yeah, I mean, but dude, I was, I was, I was explained on that three hundred and sixty deal scene over there, and it. The thing is with the three hundred and sixty, if you can get a sprint car, look, even a baby, a three hundred and five motor is not enough horsepower for a sprint car. You can hook every damn ounce of that horsepower up with that race car with as much tire and as much wing as a sprint car itself has. You can hook every ounce of the horsepower of that 305 up on the track. It has to go super slick, and then it breaks loose, but not a lot. Same thing almost for the 360. With the shock technology that came... How much horsepower do those 305s put out? I want to say 450. I want to say 450. 470, well, maybe? still a lot of power. I mean, not compared to a 410, but still right. a lot of horsepower. But, well, but here's the it's deal. Still a lot of horsepower uh, for a quarter-mile track. A you know what I mean? A sprint car starts to really break loose at about that 720, 740 mark, you know? Right. 700-ish mark. A traditional 360 sprint car, when they first started out, was hovering around the 650, you know? Right. 640. 650, 680. Some yeah, in there, it's not that way anymore. And what I mean by that is a sprint car ain't breaking loose to about seven twenty, seven fifty. So if you can get, if you could put the money like a Golubic or any of these guys, and you could put a motor together that hums in that seven hundred department, seven twenty, that Ford Moss motor era, you know that Jason Johnson dominated ASCS with that Ford motor because it put in, it put more horsepower down, you know, so. Like if you can, if you can buy more horsepower, you can have a huge advantage in 360 racing. Almost the same thing in 305s. I think it needs to be regulated before it gets out of hand. But and it has a sealed motor rule, so they do what you, what they can with it. But 360s aren't like that, you know. These guys who can afford to buy that extra horsepower can put every single piece of it down, and. That's the thing with the 410s. You can go buy that 900 horsepower 410 motor or that 920. But come a main time, you can have that 800. You can have that 850. Because once you pass that 750 mark, the car's starting to break loose. Yeah, th- th- now, there's some right, guys right, who yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that That's the logic behind it. So you could have a $30,000, $35,000 410 motor that can technically, especially on y'all shorter tracks, Compete with that 900 horsepower motor, but you can't have a 650 horsepower 360 motor compete with that 700 horsepower 360 motor because it's putting all of it down. So that's the logic behind right. it. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally understand you're saying I agree with you. Well, I'm not trying to but, tell I you mean, you're wrong or anything. I'm not denying y'all's 360 scene either. I mean, it's huge, but. People are trying to push it out. They don't want it no more because of these things. Mm. But you luckily, know. we're big enough out here because there's, you know, there's the big name guys. But then, you know, we we have our Andy Forsbergs over here, to where he's, he's not. You know, I mean, he's he's earned everything he got, and he's not the high dollar three sixty racer, but he still competes with these guys and gets wins. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Like Pacino. I mean, Pacino's a he's a good driver too. Which one? Uh, Michael Pacino. Oh, okay. I, I thought you said Macedo. My bad. No, Pacino, but Pacino too. I mean, we got we got we we still have one of Macedo's left over here. You know what I mean? For how long? Yeah, For that's how long? Another, that's that's another driver that could be leaving. I'm so surprised, that's Macedo. I'm glad I get to watch. I'm so surprised that that Carson Macedo didn't make the the switch. You know, I mean, if Carson Macedo would have made the switch, I mean, because Cole Macedo and him could have tag team high limit. I think they want Cole out of there. I think they want Cole like to that. move on. I mean, look what they did last year. They tried all they could to get him out of California, it seemed. It yeah. seemed. No, well, see, I wasn't. Uh, I don't. I only hear some of the politics. You know what I mean? Most of the time I'm at track, I'm just in the race stand. And I'm like, I, I've been watching you for about three or four weeks now, and, and you've enlightened me on a lot of stuff. I'll tell you that. You, you definitely have enlightened me on a lot of stuff that's going on. 
nationally, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I do. I love watching World of Outlaws, and, I mean, I love watching late models, you know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll watch the World Series of Outlaws, you know what I mean? The the Lucas Oil guys, and and you really like me on, the, you know, what's really going on around here. Well, I mean, I I'm just a guy you know drinking a few White Claws and some uh, Trulies, <laughs> talking shit on a Facebook well, or a YouTube. How the hell am I enlightening you? I don't get that part. Because you're just telling me that what you see is going on, and you know what I mean? You're, you're speaking the truth. You know well, what I, mean? I, speaking what you I see never said I spoke the truth. I just uh, saying what I'm seeing, <laughs> you know. Well, I, I, fuck, I think you're speaking the truth, so that's my fucking well, opinion. Well, well, what the hell do you think about them paying a hundred freaking thousand dollars for a stock car race? The hell's wrong with these white people? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know what? I think that's badass. It is pretty badass. Like said, uh, and it's funny, so we actually have a hobby stock. They just started it last year out here. It's hobby stock tour. And uh, we got guys going from because we have a lot of asphalt tracks over here too, but we've had guys going from asphalt late models, putting their motors in these hobby stocks and running this hobby stock tour out here. And they're getting anywhere from 30 to 45 cars. I heard about race. this. Yeah. And they're, you know, and I'm going from Petaluma. And I mean, and, and it's good ass racing. I mean, it's just some good racing. Well, I, I think yeah, the I mean, thing I honestly will sit here and say no matter what, uh, that I do think the speed of the car severely hurts it. Severely hurts it. Uh, on the streaming aspect. I mean right. well, these cars aspect, look right. like they're right. fucking creeping around the <laughs> racetrack. I mean they just do, don't they? Yeah, that's why you have to watch Hobby stocks and like stock, you gotta watch them live. Cause yeah, you're right. When you watch them on streaming, it's a big difference between a sprint car or a late mall. Oh my but god! When you watch it's... them live, sitting in the stands or in the pits, and you guys are just fucking duking it out, going two, three wide. I mean, it's just fucking mud flinging, cars beating and banging. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nothing like it. I mean, it's pretty freaking crazy. I gotta admit, it's it's. It's it's damn good, but once again, it is also damn, damn, damn slow on the streaming. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. I really don't. No, you're right. Well, I mean, like I I've, I've told buddies that like, oh, I just go watch racing, you know, like no, go watch NASCAR and think, oh, you know, it's just they're just going like, no, you gotta go to a racetrack. You can't. You know, I mean, you gotta go to the racetrack and watch them and get the experience. Because I mean, it's nothing like watching a race live. I mean, TV. No matter what, no matter what streaming, whatever you're doing, it, you don't get justice of watching a race live, being there at the facility. I mean, it's can't beat it. I don't care. I don't. I don't care. Yeah, but the streaming is where the money's coming from, right? In today's world. Yeah, I, right, right. I mean, I understand like with the late malls and the and the and the the King of World Got Laws and yes, and now the high limit, I understand that now I mean that's yes, I mean, they're getting so much money off that now. But it's just still it's it just I mean I understand from the point of making money and for the series and how that works, streaming is big. It is. But yeah, you're right. I mean, like for me, I mean, that's I mean, what I'm allows little because... tracks. That's what's allowing these little tracks to have big shows, you know, because traditionally, if right. you wanted to have a big show, you had to pay for it with the grandstand income. And if you couldn't pay for it with the grandstand income, you couldn't have the fucking show. And, and that's why most right. of these bigger shows happened at big tracks, because big tracks had the grandstands to be able to hold them. And in now today's world, you could have a big race at a small track because it's it's not you're not just making money on the 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 per viewer in person. You're making money on the per viewer streaming, and you can have it's an unlimited amount as to how many people can fund that event. Right. Oh, another topic. 
you talking about that one guy, uh, he's reading the post, the guy said there ain't no crown jewel events for the uh, high limit. I said go, I, I that, said go cup. I, go I bl- cup? I'm telling I go there every year, and I'm telling you, that place is, there's so many campers there, so many people there. I mean, it, it's for a short track. I mean, and it's a three, four day event down there because, you know, I mean, we run the 360s on Wednesday. And, you know, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then the facilities are big. I mean, the facilities are great. And there's so much camping that, like you say. I know. I've been there. I mean, I almost got my ass whooped at the damn titty party or whatever, the stripper deal. But uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The chili cook-off and the. Uh, yeah, the bikini oh, yeah, contest. Then, uh, well, I didn't get. Yeah. I, I, I had. I, well, I. I just don't have the money to get in a fight, man. If they, I've I've told them all the time, um, I told them all the time. You know, uh, I, I've told these people if you want to lace up and do some pay per view something, to where nobody's going to jail, nobody's getting in trouble. Somebody, you know, it's a fight. You know, nobody's gonna jump in and stop. Because uh, people are so stupid when it comes to real fights. They're so dumb. I've seen yep. been and 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 had the good and the bad of real fights. And in real fights, it could start out one on one, but sometimes it don't end on one on one. And when three guys walk the fuck up, I already know I'm outnumbered. And 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 also yeah, when yeah. you when you actually can lace up and fight, that's when you're actually utilizing skill as well. Because there's one hit wonders. Everyone can get knocked the fuck out. Every fucking body. There's and you hear a lot of the fighters talk about this in a street fight. There's always the the chance of getting knocked the fuck out. One hits. You know, it doesn't matter how oh, yeah. good you are, how how drunk you are, how drunk they are. If you're sober, they're not. If they if they hit the right way. It's fucking over, and, and that's how street fights have to go. They have to go quick because most of the time when they go down, people start screaming and yelling, and you got people's coming to break it up, and they're calling police, and everybody's going, I ain't got time for all that. If people actually want to lace up and actually and actually fight, I'm, full, I'm all for that. I'm all for actual fighting. But situations right, like that fight. that happened at the, the dance... I back away from those situations because it's it's high risk. There ain't no big yeah, high, to me. They're drunk ass people, right? Well, there ain't no high risk to me in getting my ass knocked the fuck out in front of a bunch of people. I don't care. That's not a risk to me getting knocked out. And <laughs> I mean that. And that's when you go into a fight. If you're actually committing to a fight, you commit to that outcome because fights are unpredictable. You never yeah, I mean, know it's, what's it's, gonna it's, happen. Yeah. You could be the baddest motherfucker on the world, bro. Buster Douglas still fucking knocked Mike Tyson out. You know, so yep. you, you could be as bad as you think you might be. But in those scenarios, it's not a fight. It's just not a fight. And, and there's too much risk involved. I, I, I don't I don't see getting knocked the fuck out as a risk. It's embarrassing, but I, fuck, I'm not worried about embarrassment. Fuck it, it'd be cool. I'll, I'll probably share the highlight if I was to get knocked out on, on camera. Right, you wake up, and when you fight one-on-one like you're supposed to, no matter win or lose, you fucking get up and fucking shake hands like a fucking man. Right, right. I mean, that, this is what I'm saying. I'm not really scared of a real fight, but I am scared personally of losing my license, being in jail, getting felony charges for attempted murder. Like if you get in a fight and you get in a position where you got to choke a fucker and you got to like him them up and they pass out, maybe you're drunk. You're just fucking mad. Fuck you, you motherfucker. And, and, and they pass out and you're just so mad and enraged. And, and all of a sudden you get your, everybody starts screaming. And you, you wake out of your fucking psycho moment. You may have just had when you were engaging with this fucking asshole and, 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 and he's knocked out. You just choked him to death. And now he ain't waking up. You know, in a street fight, yeah, this no, shit happens. Yeah, yeah, it's just, this yeah. happens. Say, say you're sitting there, dude walks up talking all this shit. You knock a motherfucker out, he falls back and clips the back of his fucking head on the edge of a table and busts his skull open and dies. Yeah, attempted murder. Yeah. You're dead. Your life is over. So yeah. this is why I, in a, in a public setting, an uncontrolled environment, 
Try to walk not away. engage into those scenarios. Yeah, walk away. Yeah, it's because not the it. risk right. is way, way, way too much. But once again, if people want to lace up and fight, I have no problem in doing that. I would enjoy that. I like testing myself. That tests are fun. <laughs> tests are fun. Tests are fun. I yeah. like tests are enjoyable. So. Anyway, sorry, I, I've just said Go Cup is a badass event. I did have that scenario happen. That's what made me think of all this. But this is how we do it.